Okay, um, if everyone will please stand for our invocation and I pledge, um, Mr. Jordan, you lead us in our invocation. Yes, let us pray. Father, we come this morning just thanking you, Lord, for blessing us to be uh, able to come out today. And we thank you for this day, and Lord, we ask you to bless our meeting today, Lord, that those things are done, Lord, pleasing in thy sight, and a blessing to your people. We thank you, Lord, for our nation, our state, and our county. We ask your blessings upon us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic.
Were all the homes in the county served by the committee? Yes, they were. Describe educational efforts by the committee. We had training sessions four times this year conducted by the region long-term care ombudsman designed to keep our joint CAC abreast of recent rules and regulations affecting nursing home and assisted living facilities in North Carolina. We discussed during training the impact of these rules and regulations regarding residents' bill of rights. B, we participated in seminars regarding long-term care resident bill of rights. We held monthly meetings to discuss etc. residents' bills of rights and different other concerns of the facilities serving the long-term care residents in Gates County. We read and discussed periodicals regarding new trends in long-term care treatment. <clears throat> Three, describe, describe community involvement by the committee. The Joint CAC directs the Gates County North Carolina Church Ambassadors Incorporated to put on programs at the county's long-term care facilities, which are designed to coincide with red letter dates and holidays for the facility's long-term care residents. The church ambassadors then request funding for these programs if required from We Are Committed of Gates Incorporated to support the joint CAC's approved programs. These programs are designed to enhance the residents' quantity and quality of life at Accordia's Health and Rehabilitation Center and Gates House Assisted Living Facility. Describe problems encountered by the committee. Joint CAC members, most, not all, fail to prepare activity reports in a timely manner. And this is basically coming from the chairperson. Joint CAC members may not be fulfilling their necessary Bill of Rights duties regarding friendly visits to our county's long-term care facilities. And I put this down because by us being appointed as CAC members, the residents at each facility should have some familiarity, if not by names, when we go in because of our responsibility to visit the facilities mandated by the state. There continue to be inequities amid the entire community's involvement with long-term care facilities. A committee meeting space is necessary at both facilities. Was the committee involved in grievance procedures? No, we were not. Summarize the strengths and weaknesses of the facilities in Gates County. First, I will deal with Gates County Assisted Living Facility. Number one, it lacks a multi-purpose room. It lacks a sufficient telephone switchboard. Um, the new administrator shows a strong compassion for the facility's residents and employee morale. The activity director shows the knowledge of the facility's mission, elderly assisted living and memory care. She demonstrates each discipline that has its own special needs regarding the various activities. Now this is according to health and Rehabilitation Center Nursing Home. Structural renovations are in progress aimed toward enhancing the residents' quantity and quality of life. The facility has an active residence council. The facility has a high staff turnover. The facility lacks an adequate method of residence transportation. Loitering of residents around the nurse's station. Unsecured main entry exit door to the facility. Facility still lacks a multi-purpose room. Too much activity other than eating and serving occurs in the facility's dining hall. The dining hall is not adequately maintained for the resident's health and safety. The facility's choice of resident's food service fails to meet certain resident requirements or what have you, residential satisfaction. And the activities need to be more structured to improve residents' quality and quantity of life. 
Um, other comments? Other community and civic groups, including churches, need to be involved with both facilities at times other than Thanksgiving and Christmas. Commissioners, please revisit the reimbursement of travel expenses for the joint CAC members. And due to the events of Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Maria, the joint CAC recommends evaluation of statewide emergency action plans for all of the North Carolina long-term care facilities. Um, this ends the report. Are there any questions? Well, thank you for all you do with Kanye and your committee members. We certainly appreciate everything that you do. Are there any questions for the board? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chairman. I'd like to uh, just bring some things up uh, mm -hmm. for the ambassador to uh, to certainly consider and wonder if, if it's ever uh, been complained of. Mm -hmm. have, uh, have the patients ever complained to our ambassadors uh, as in the report of not receiving their medication? No. Um, they cannot complain to the ambassadors as such. They have to complain to the CAC members which are appointed by the Gates County commissioners. And then what we do, once we get that complaint, we pass it on to Brandy Jordan. Uh, we cannot write up complaints now because of the new rules and regulations that will be affecting the nursing home that will go, that went into effect July 12th. But we will consider that concern. It, it would, uh, with your, with your visitation and with your close, closeness with the uh, uh, residents and patients, uh, I, I think that would be, I think they would probably let you know. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and subsequently then you could let the staff know. Because uh, I, I think that could be an issue in some places. Okay, we will certainly look into that. Um, we are basically, we're trying to be on top of things. Um, we were given a mandate that we cannot write up any complaints anymore. They have to be given to us verbally, and then as CAC members, we pass them on to Brandon Joy, as I reiterated, and within three to four business days, they have to be acted on. That is a mandate by the state. Does Ms. Jordan let you, let you know as ambassadors if she has received those types yes, of Yes, we like have to, place? yes, yes. And basically, we are the route where she gets the grievances. Uh, recently, the Residence Council at Accordius has invited us to sit on their resident council meetings because they did have a lot of grievances that we had to funnel to Miss Jordan. But um, hopefully things will improve and the strengths and weaknesses are not there to to attack them, but is to have a better quality of life for the residents who are there. Uh, because that is their home and the state is implementing new rules and regulations, whereas, well, commissioners, as you know, the appointments now, we have to be certified by the state to serve on this particular board. And at the, if we do not perform our duties, we have to attend 25% of the mandated meetings, training sessions, etc. We have to fulfill volunteer hours. And these are some of the reasons that we ask that you revisit just traveling expenses for the CAC members because we now have two facilities that we have to be in charge of. And 
four times a year that we have to do an unannounced walkthrough that becomes public record. The long-term care ombudsman gets one, the copy comes here, and it goes to the state. And they clock the hours that we actually put in at each nursing facility as CAC members. Okay, any, any additional questions? Uh, yes. Um, do you know if the state has a rating system for the long-term care facilities, like this facility is A, B, C, or D? Um, something like your restaurants has rating you know, That way, it would seem that you could tell which facilities are considered five-star, four-star, mm -hmm. whatever. Is there any kind of rating system that you're aware of? Yes. Uh, I don't know whether it's an American rating system, but we are to peruse the state survey book that is in each facility. And right now, Aquarius is not really where it needs to be. There, there are as gingerly as I can, there is a lot that they have to do to bring the facility up to standards. Um, they are doing the, the renovations that we see that are going on. But in doing renovations, it is important that the residents are have a good quality of life. And when you have a very high staff turnover, there is not consistency in the type of care that the residents receive. And that is one of our main complaints. Very too much the high staff turnover. Um, and we hope that they are working on that. I think it would be good for the commissioners if we could somehow see what that um, rating system is and then see where our facilities fall within that system. I think that Okay. You, I'm sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks. Excuse me, my husband just told me there is there is a national rating system. And uh, I think we, you, we we can probably look that yes, up. Yes, and it's it's not really it's not really good. I think it's like if there's a sufficient or, I mean, or any has deficit of, uh, you know, things. It's, it's not a A, B, C, D, or I just walk through the short thing. But I think it can go online. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, and thank you. And thank you again for all y'all do. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to administrative reports. Um, hi, Matt. This is for September 25th or October 19th. Sprayfield, two bids were received for each advertised contract for the Sprayfield project. EnviroTech and Palace Point received both bids based upon the information. Contract one bid was $588,187.50. Contract two bid was $1,900,595.20. Bid approval and acceptance is later on the agenda. The historic courthouse information provided by Andrews Construction is in your packet and will also be discussed later. Courthouse roof. Yeah. Pre-bid meeting was held September the 25th for the roof of the courthouse. On October the 6th, two bids were received. LaFace Construction Company LLC was selected as the lowest responsible bidder with a winning bid of $224,000. The anticipated length of time to complete the construction is 120 days, and LaFace would like to begin work in November. They were actually here yesterday and actually indicated it would possibly be the beginning of December before all of the plans were completed. School construction. The Board of Education received plans for Central Middle School. Commissioners approved the need-based school grant application in the amount of $2.5 million, with all money being used for new construction. The county audit is not complete. Based upon conversations between the school board, Chair Felton, Chair Hawker, Jody Hawks, Ted Cole with Davenport and myself, 
We anticipate the earliest the county can appear before the LGC for loan approval is February 2018. Salary study. All full-time employees are to complete an employee questionnaire for the salary study, which is being conducted by the MAPS group, and they were all turned in on October the 25th. The MAPS group will conduct employee meetings in November and make a full report by January 2016. American Legal was selected as the lowest responsible bidder for the codification project, which is to codify all the Gates County ordinances. The cost is $12,000. The project will last through this fiscal year. And on October the 18th, Melissa Lawrence not attended an AC, NCA, excuse me, NCACC risk management meeting where preparing for an emergency was discussed. Do you have any questions? Yes, uh, the earliest that we're going to appear before the LGC is February. Yes. Um, and our grants are supposed to be utilized by December 31st. So, um, what is the, um, what are the thoughts on that as far as Mr. Felton said he has a verbal, um, he's verbally spoken with people at DPI and they have said that they can have an extension. I've asked for that in writing. So I need to send that in writing myself to him and to Dr. Williams so that we can get that in writing as well. And hopefully the allergists will come and then give us their report so that we can move on. Yes, because we have had audit um, change of auditors midstream, so to speak, and they will be returning hopefully within the next two weeks. I think the codification of the uh, uh, on the ordinances. Ordinances. What, 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 what's your idea? That is the cost. No, we do not have a single ordinance that has been codified according to state recommendations. And that was money that was approved during the budget process to codify all of our ordinances, which include the noise ordinance, um, zoning, subdivision, anything that's an ordinance, including our personnel policy, could also be included. Now, when we say codified, or just clarification, that means to um, put them in some kind of numbering sequence so yes. they're identified as, as a record number so forth. Yes, and they're being um, reviewed by attorneys to make sure that everything is legal and up to date as well. And if there is something that is not been modified according to general statute, they'll also make us aware of that so that we can change it. Primarily for liability issues. Make it easier to also find it when we go look up something. Okay, um, tax. Ms. Lane. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to review the collector report. Um, it does not contain the UTS figures. They will be uh, available later, and we'll get that amended. Any questions uh, regarding that report? Well, you're gearing up for your busy season, I'm sure. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's definitely. Yes, indeed. I noticed we didn't have any Zykeus legal services be this period. Um, but they did collect. Yeah. We got five, they five. Like the one and they just want any fees. Oh, yeah. no. So we got like $5,691.29. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. We didn't have to spend anybody getting the number. Yes, indeed, yes. Okay, I believe we have a request for a refund. Yes, a last minute uh, submission, if you will, for a refund in the amount of $151.32. And we see that all the paperwork is um, with it. That's right, the tags were turned in, of course. Trade in the old vehicle before new one. Yeah. Okay, what else?
what is the pledge of the board uh, in the amount of one hundred fifty one dollars and thirty two cents to be refunded? Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that uh, as pertaining to eleven thirty one hundred one sixty re request for refund number one in the amount of one hundred and fifty one dollars and thirty two cents um, be approved. Second. Motion's been made and second. Discussion? Hear none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all those? Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right. And I did have a note in there about the debt set-off letters that, of course, were mailed as we do every fall. Of course, uh, those individuals receive those letters for delinquent taxes. Uh, with the debt set-off program, we are um, kind of under the umbrella that we can um, get any uh, refund, income tax refund, uh, as well as any lottery earnings, you know, at BP. Um, we've, we've had a few payments trickle in. Uh, we'll upload those that have not paid uh, into this weekend, next week, into that uh, clearinghouse program. So I just want to make the board aware of that, uh, as well as the gap billing letters that were mailed out. As I mentioned uh, not long ago in the commissioner's meeting, that was going to be something that taxpayers were going to get those bills for those vehicles that have been parked in the yard. And we've sent about 46 letters out. So far, we've not received any payment uh, for any of those um, bills, if you will. So about $623.54 was actually billed out for gap billing. Just wanted to make the board aware of that. If the phone is ringing or people have questions, we invite them to call us. They're going to be um, a little perplexed as to getting that bill when they paid it at DMV and the penalty and that kind of thing. So just have them call us. We'll be happy to answer any questions regarding that. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Um, is there any other department reports? Okay. Um, just a couple of articles of interest on your table. Um, you had uh, information about, from the Albemarle Commission about their um, monthly impact report that you see, and it's coming up the annual awards banquet and programs, and that is on Thursday, November 16th at Kurtuk um, Cooperative Extension. Uh, all of us are invited, we need to RSVP by the November 7th. It is a very interesting program. They have always a good speaker, uh, and you get to see commissioners from the 10 counties representative of the Avermont Commission. So I would encourage you to take part and go if possible. Okay, um, Mike McAllister. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. It's been a while. It's been a while, and uh, we're finally getting to a point that we're actually going to start moving the dirt, which uh, I hope that. I didn't uh, think I'd see the day. Uh, I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. It's been a struggle. But uh, I think that Natalie's already given you the numbers. Uh, we did have, a, of course, we did have to redid the project for lack of three bidders. The bids were received on the 19th. Uh, we have those numbers. Uh, the contract one, which is Honeypot Road and Force Main, is a little under budget, and the uh, spray field is a little over budget. So it, we came out about uh, with a difference of about 269,974 was the over between uh, what we had budgeted back in, I think the last budget I gave you was in June of this year, or maybe earlier. And, uh, if you got the letter in front of you, you can also see the breakdown of most of what has been paid today by the county. And a lot of that was work that was done on the carry track and options and so forth that was done in the uh, before this particular track of mine was chosen. Um, we did, I did check on uh, Envirotech Unlimited, which was the most better I got pretty good feedback from an engineer that works with them on a regular basis on a very, very similar projects. He had good words to say about them, said he did good work with the record. So I'm recommending that you uh, that you award both contracts to the Viratech uh, 
Unlimited Construction Services out of Harbinger and uh, continue to fund funding being available and continue to fund approval from the fund needs. Heard what Muslim McAllister has recommended. Uh, do you all have questions for Muslim McAllister? How long has uh, Environment Tech Lender been in business? And how long has TA Loving been in business? If, if you're aware of that. TA Loving has been in business since 1925. Environment Tech, I think, has been around maybe about 30 years. About 30. Yeah. So it's not something that's just popped up? No. No. Thank you very much. Thank Let's you. hope to see you. Have a safe trip. Okay, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to go into a public hearing. Uh, Madam Chair, just before we do that, uh, on the financial statements okay. and revenue on the phase three of, of 15. Some of this was insurance money that was received, it appears, and there was also the Monsanto grant is the bulk of that money that was for Gatesville Volunteer Fire Department. Yeah. Remember, we accepted it as a pass through, and then we turned, then we write the check, and there was a. 
a reimbursement for an emergency management worker who had a grant that was paying for some meals and we had paid for it so the money went in here to offset um, some payments from last fiscal year. Or some of it because several of things, these things were to, um, and some of this is listed as in batches, and I can't get into the batches themselves, but some of it has to do with some reimbursement and posting to, um, for period 13 revenue. Okay. I remember the Monsanto grant because we did, you were guided the previous year, and it should, comes to us, then we give it to you. Okay, at this time I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session. Public hearing. Public hearing. Public hearing. <laughs> uh, keep it straight. Public hearing uh, to deal with uh, yes programs. Uh, Chairman, I'll make a motion that we uh, open up a public hearing regarding the yes inter regional transportation system grants. Second that motion, Madam Chair. Motion's been made to second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, at this time we're in the public um, hearing. Patrice, I always enjoy when I get my book and see this much reading to do. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I was being facetious. <laughs> I got it. Um, yes, this is the annual administrative grant for transportation where we pay um, the cost for the building and administrative staff. Um, this year it's about 16,000 less than previous years. There's a, a little cut across the state um, with some of the funding. But um, it's the same program that we, that, that we do every year. Um, it's for the administrative and the capital is to replace two vehicles um, that have met its life expectancy. Okay. Okay, when you say you will cut sixteen thousand dollars, is there ways that we can oh avenues for money? Um, well I know sometimes the state takes it and then it gives it back. They are putting it in like I guess in the next time we're talking about enhanced transportation services where you apply for operating money, which is what they're doing is I guess putting administrative and giving you opportunity for systems to apply for um, operating funds, which we are so kind of, yes. <laughs> I, I always do that they give, they, I mean, they do it back in the normal way. Okay, um, certainly a very interesting reading. Um, yes, it's very important to our citizens. Um, I see them on, on the road all the time. Um, and there, the number of um, trips you take and pass, passengers, it's very important to our county. Um, Thank you for the work you do. Are there any questions from board members? No questions. I would like to make a comment just uh, so the general public. Uh, Patrice is very uh, adept and, and she allows me to sit on that board and uh, and I learn a lot from that. But I don't know that everyone is really familiar, Patrice, with the fact that sometimes uh, you're called upon to drop off uh, someone, maybe pit, in pit counting at the hospital. And subsequently, they have to stay X number of hours because of the appointment, and it puts you on buying uh, transportation lines. And I, I think the board would probably like to hear a little bit of that, how you also combine that with working with the ESS in, in getting these folks home. Um, well, we have a, of course, the annual plan that we put together as to what places we go and where we go. Um, in addition to that, we are, since we're a county department, we work very closely with Gates County Social Services and, and taking their clients because if we don't take them, then their social workers have to leave work and they have to go and pick them up and take them places. Um, when we take them to other areas and um, if they're not ready by the appointment time, if we have to leave, um, someone has to go back to get them to so either us or the actual office employee. So it kind of cuts into some of the service plans that we do. But we, we try to do it the best that we can or whatever, try to make sure that the social workers don't have to take time out of their schedules to go. 
for the most part, we have had a few clients that we've had to leave, but we'll go back to get them. Um, it actually is just um, from a perspective of Medicaid, Medicaid has a requirement that if they are going to the nearest provider, the service has to be provided. So if the client stays over and it's over our time as the county, we have to pick them up and then a county department we take that back. And, and additionally, maybe the VA hospital sometimes we have VAs that a veteran that is stuck there. So the VA hospital situation is a lot better you now that we have the one in Elizabeth City. It's not as far. We go back and forth daily um, at Elizabeth City. We generally don't have a lot of that. When we go to Hampton VA, um, most of the time if people are going to have extended stay, they know that ahead of time. But um, for the for the one that they've had in Elizabeth City, it really has helped. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I notice on the grant that, as we always do, we have a local funding matching amount. And uh, I see for this first grant is sixty seven thousand. It's sixty seven thousand. I think Kim was there for the whole. Not, she is fortunate she can use other grants to match. So it's not necessarily all, it's not necessarily county money. So we don't have ways to get those right. other yeah. Well forty thousand of it is coming from the road fund. Mm -hmm. What we do is for the enhanced medical transportation, we it's a process that we can get additional money. We take the forty thousand that we get from ETAP and we match the elderly grant mm -hmm. to make it trying to be eighty thousand, I guess. So quite, it's only about 27000 that we have to come up with. And we do come up with that out of the, the um, contract revenues that we get. Um, some of it is listed as, um, it says that we take it out of reserves. But what that is is because there's no way to guarantee that we'll get this amount of revenue until we provide the service. So it says revenues in a sense. I mean, it says um, reserves to cover that because um, you all sign off that you guarantee that the money is there. Mm -hmm. And thank you because you do a good job of getting the grants to help cover the I'll share the payments and all. Um, do we need to do these both uh, separately? This year we can do it together. Oh, we can do it together. I'll entertain a motion at this time to approve the annual community transportation administrative and capital grant application as well as the enhanced mobility of senior and individuals with disabilities program grant application. So moving that, Joe. Have a second. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Um, there's no further discussion. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. You didn't come out of public hearing. Right. Do I have a motion to come out of public hearing? So moved. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and second to come out of public hearing. Uh, at this time, we'll take the vote for the. Um, we're all in favor. Yeah, we're <laughs> all in favor of the FY 2019 Annual Communication, Transportation Administration, and Capital Grant Application. <laughs> as well as the Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disability Program Grant Application. Does the person who made the motion still want to make that motion? So moved, yes ma'am. Any seconds? I think we had two. <laughs> okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, I apologize. I'm not on my game but I think I watched the game last night on TV too long. Um, so. Okay, <laughs> moving on down. Customer service policy amendments. This was brought to our attention last month in September due to changes in state uh, that we had to uh, come in line with ours. And the big difference, of course, was the, uh, the number of days the late fee has the implemented an item of good. Due date, 10 days, 
um, when we had been, been doing it a little bit longer, but state general statute says it has to be done in 10 days. On page 8 of that policy is the statement that you requested Diane Hendricks to go back and put in writing so that you could read it and take a vote on the policy today. The statement's in the middle of the page and highlighted in yellow. And that was the second area. Okay. I'll entertain a motion concerning this change in policy. And the change in policy is that businesses that are privately contracted with a waste disposal company must provide customer service with a copy of their contract to receive a 50% reduction in their solid waste fee. The contract information must be updated annually. I'm Jim, I'll make a motion that we amend our customer service policy uh, as proposed at our last meeting, including um, the private business uh, allowance for a 50% reduction on showing their contract. And a motion has been made. Did I hear a second? I'll second the motion, Madam Chairman. Any discussion? When will this be effective? Is it still going to be January? I knew that had been the discussion at the last meeting. Is it effective January 1st, December, today? Well, if it's to December 1st. To be, yeah, I would think December 1st. Okay. Do you, would you add that to your motion? Uh, that effective December 1st, 2017. Would you approve that as your second? Okay. Uh, any other questions? Thank you for the point nine, but we do have to have our effect today. Okay, is everyone prepared to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, okay, it is approved. Effective December 1st. Okay, next item on the agenda is the animal control. Um, we had a work session on October 4th, I believe, and we <coughs> made some changes in our um, animal control policy. If you go through, the changes are highlighted in yellow. Um, the first change that was made was that inhumane conditions under the definitions, pent full of feces, water full of algae and dirt, moldy food, foul odor, unclean, decomposing, or dead animals, producing pungent or odors and grass 12 inches or higher. That was added to that. I might add that was consistent with our nuisance ordinance. Consistent with our nuisance ordinance. Uh, then on the next page, proper shelter, the definition. Constant 
the access to sufficient shelter, three side walls, a roof, and a floor that sets above the grain, protecting from weather, ice, rain, um, snow, sleet, and sun. Barns and farm shelters are excluded from being required to have a floor that sets above the grain. in our work session. Uh, any comments concerning those? I think they were all uh, incorporated as we as we intended. that James Andrews provided from a moving company that would 
hold up the roof. And the third option that is in your packet is the one that would recommend tearing down the roof over the west wing and starting from scratch. So building from the bottom up. And I'll come to the clear scapes give us recommendations. Clear scapes is number one. Their recommendations are number one. Well, that is what they had provided in the initial communication. When then you ask us to go back and find out what were other options. So the other two options are to hold it up as recommended by the house mover or to tear down completely and start over. This case also is questioning the 20% Martha. Have you made any contact with Andrews? No, but it's also clear skates um, practice in the past based on bills that also include 20% markup. Any other questions?
but at least come over 200,000 slaves. And I thank Dr. Hall for any of the, for the historical society, but they might make a donation. I think once you get see some progress being made over there, we may get more than that donation. And also, the, there are potentials for at least some help through Covington, and I think we can get some help from them. That's a grant. Um, and the, I'm not sure about the Stedman. But um, there are a couple of potentials that we can think as avenues as well. Yes, we are. I think that you Well, the historical society would have, there's one, I believe, only the historical society can apply for. And one is? One, I believe, the county can apply for. I'll have to double check on that one. And I think the historical society, like the bed you were room, I think they are planning on doing that that room because they had, um, you know, sex with his memorabilia and all. But I can't speak for them. But I know they received money from the General Assembly and all for that. So. Okay, what is the pleasure of the group? Uh, I kind of agree with Mr. Feller. We kicked this ball away in the room for too long. Will we make a decision? forward. Uh, and concerning, we do need more office space. For, I mean, people are on top of each other in some of our offices. And this chart's very helpful. So again, I'll just reiterate what Commissioner Felton said. So I can't imagine. Because I think once the, uh, our citizens realize what's going to happen there, then and money to the city in the long run. Is that a motion? I'll make a motion. Yes. Okay, you want to make a motion to proceed. Do you have a, which plan? And I, you know, like I say, all the plans are the same, and I certainly uh, want to ride the fact that Commissioner Felton on the 20% as, as I had, uh, had reviewed this. I saw 20% everywhere at the end of each one. Uh, but I think the recommendation of one seems to be, in my mind, uh, a highlight. That's the one that's the $379,000 one. Now, our building inspector is also here. If anyone would like to ask any questions, I'm sorry I did not say that earlier. So I don't know if that was actually a motion or not. Well, but <laughs> And, and uh, I think that's a great idea because. Uh, since yeah. Mitchell was here, uh, Mitchell. Like to, uh, this, you know, for most of us, this is kind of boring. Um, you have seen the recommendations that have been made. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, your opinion on the three options. In construction, you got three basic categories. Meeting the plan requirements, the homeowner, I mean, other requirements, budget, and schedule. Leaving the roof there is going to impede on two, if not three of those, because you might take the home mover option and something go wrong and you got to tear the roof down anyway. Mm -hmm. Or the metal supports. Doing it from scratch, you take out all the unknowns. The contractor is going to have all the control and you know everything going in, what the schedule is going to be, what the budget is going to be. And also, the roof, you know it's going to be done and right, that you're never going to have any problems with it in the future on that wing. So, to me, I can't see any other recommendation like the one that, that complete is there, right? complete tear down. Complete tear down. I believe you spoke with Reed Thomas, and he said it would be okay for us to. Correct. Reed Thomas said that because of all the work that had been done, that he did not have a problem from a personal standpoint or from the state historical office's standpoint if the entire West Wing was rebuilt including the roof. Okay, that, uh, that's option three on here that we have. Correct, in the, pack, in the order that you have them in, yes, it is option three. And that's the cheapest one. And um, James Andrews did say, if you'll notice what he did throughout the bids, 
he broke it down by man hours. So of course, if he estimates it takes 30 hours and it only takes 20, we will only pay for the 20 hours. But if it takes 40, then you pay for the 40. This is certainly appreciate that expertise. Okay. Do you have additional questions uh, for Mr. Mitchell? I don't. It's very well explained, and I certainly want to uh, amend my motion to option number three. <laughs> okay. You're putting that as a motion. Yes, sir. Proceed with option three. Yes, sir. Yes. Motion to amend a second. Any discussion? Here and I are we prepared to vote? Okay, let's, let's show a show of hands, the right hand. All those in favor say it. Raise the right hand. Okay, the vote is 4 0. So we are approved to go ahead with plan three. Now, does he have any idea of a start date for him? No, I do not. I will talk with him. Depending on what time we get finished today, it might be tomorrow. I'll contact um, James Andreas and bring it back to budget amendments, not just for this, but also for the um, wastewater at our November meeting. Okay. And Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. And we will try to contact, make some contacts if I can as well, between I and then to see what we are, if we can be eligible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next item, we'll move it to new business. Do we need to take a stretch break? Okay. Uh, new business, surplus request. Uh, we have some flip phones and slide phones that are, that are, we are, I'm asking that they be destroyed due to age and this is allowed under the procurement policy. Okay. Do I hear a motion to, um, whether these are not numbered, but the request for um, construction of the six phones and... Um, That's all it is, six phones. Okay, all six phones. How do you do it? Smash and hammer. They'll be ran over, smashed with hammers, torn apart, that sort of thing. We can still, we still need to probably take sure. them apart just to be on the safe side. Because of the Even though, from what I can see, there's not really anything on the phone. There's no number saved or anything like that. But they do not work. They do not hold the charge. We'll and you cannot buy batteries. We we'll have access to a furnace. Too. <laughs> okay, I entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Uh, I'm sure that we uh, dispose of the Phones, these surplus phones as presented in our surplus uh, record. Okay, okay, you have a second? Yes, ma'am. Second. Motion to be made, second in discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so y'all start the short. Okay, request for surplus. This is a 2008. Chevy Colorado, five cylinder, 126 lanes and 168 miles. Um, set, you want to sell it on the dock, on uh, Dove Dock deals um, with a minimum bid of $500. And this was a truck bought by the Kane in 2008. Minimum bid being 
Why does pleasure the group? I'll make a motion that the uh, surplus of 2006 show Sherry Colorado as requested. The surplus disposition right. A second. So, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay. Now we have a 1988 Ford F700 dump, dump truck with 116,979 miles on it. We don't know what funds we used to purchase it, uh, but it, we recommend a minimum bid on GovDot deals for $2,500. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, we're getting a red of vehicles. We might have some parking in the parking lot. Oh, well, okay. All of those are not in the parking lot, by the way. <laughs> okay, we have next uh, a recommendation from Mrs. Holly, the case kind of DSS director. Uh, she is proposing that Christy Cochran be appointed as a parent representative on our Gates County Community Child Protection Team. Um, it, it is required to have a parent on that um, team, and Ms. Cochran could, could fill that role. What is the pleasure of the board? Uh, I have a question for you. Okay, you have a question, Ms. Holland? Would you like to step to the podium? I'm not a opposed to this, but I certainly would like to know. Have, have we touched base with her? I'm pretty sure you have. Um, yes, and so. she has agreed. Matter of fact, she was just appointed to serve on the Dix County Child Intelligence Prevention Team and the Dix County Community Child Protection Team and the Child Fatality Prevention Team, we are joined. We have our meetings at the same time. Okay, so it's not this week or not this It's combined. Okay, well that's, that was my question because I want to make sure that she was aware that we need to meet with yes. uh, There's only one meeting. Yes, she's aware. Okay. But last month we approved her because she correct. has lost her child. That's correct. correct. Okay, so motion has been Name and no, no motion is the name. Uh, I'll make a motion that um, that is uh, be appointed to the uh, Gates County Community Child Protection Team. Uh, I have a question. I'll second that motion. Motion's been made and seconded. Any formal discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, Christmas lunch. We haven't even had Thanksgiving. Uh, there's, and uh, Ms. Hendricks could not be here today due to staff shortage and customer service. She asked that there are two options that the committee decided upon. The first is option one, county offices to be closed from 3 to 5 on Friday, December 15th, and that if the offices are closed and, and employees choose not to attend, then they use leave time for those two hours. And the offices for op for option two, if the offices are not closed, then there will be a lunch from 12 to 2 for a floating luncheon. And then they are also asking that the commissioners cover the main meet. And I think we do that every year that we have provided the meet for. Um, And that way we're not really closing the offices for, for, the, for not everyone would not be aware they might travel some distance to do some county business and find the closer to the Also people like to sometimes um, you know, hot legs pay and stuff and you know, the water and everything, get it straight, taxes, all that. Um, is it recommendation for, of the board that we will pay for the main meet and that we our preferences Option one. Well, well, option one is the three to five. Oh, no, option so two. Which one? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. option two. I'm sorry, 12 noon to two. 12 to Spot on. All right, yes, ma'am. I'll make a motion that we, uh, I think Ray made a motion. Okay. 
Uh, motion has been made and properly second that we have the Christmas lunch from 12 to 2 at County Extension on December 15th and that the commissioners will pay for the meeting. Any additional questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. And I would encourage all uh, um, staff to attend those. Um, commissioners are generally there. It's a time to socialize so just a little while and um, you can work at I think in your offices, to maintain your offices and also come. Well, everyone is required to take a lunch hour anyway. Yeah, everybody has to take a lunch hour, so take it with us. Um, we certainly would enjoy seeing you. Okay, um, the next one is the um, lottery. lottery application and that is We have it. Okay. We have it. I it's the same it. application that you can, that we approve each year. The commissioners have to formally approve it in order for us to receive our lottery funding each year. The lottery funding is used to pay down the current school debt that we have. It was interesting. I thought the second page or that we received the amounts that people get in uh, lottery revenue. Now, of course, it's not the whole list, but. I, uh, well, certainly helps us at $110,000. Um, uh, certainly this is something I don't, can't see that's controversial uh, at all. Uh, what is it? Uh, I'll entertain a motion. I see it's controversial but if we compare it to Burke County, but anyway. Well, it's controversial when you compare it to um, some of those that get a tremendous amount. It's based on student population. Madam Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve submitting our lottery applications for funding uh, proceeds for the county. Second that motion, Madam Chairman. Okay, a motion's been made and second to uh, approve the application for the public school bills and capital fund for the North Carolina Educational Lobby uh, lottery for next year. Uh, any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. All those opposed. Okay, we will do that. Okay, and we have a budget amendments to do. And the budget amendments are Thank you. 
information is from the state. Right. Social services, um, it's not uncommon to receive more than one during a year. Yes. Very well, thank you. Okay, motion's been made, appropriate second to approve amendment number 11 um, to provide additional funds to the crisis intervention program. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, it passes. Okay, um, anything else that needs to be brought for us? I'm, I'm Chairman, I, I wanted to bring this up. I thought it was going to be a dinner. Uh, but I've been made aware that the, uh, what we call the swap houses at the convenience sites, that they were, the one in Sunbury was, re was removed because of the uh, roof leakage and uh, damage in the floor. And I've had numerous citizens and site workers to uh, ask me about that. It was really providing a service to the citizens of the county that uh, that was really beneficial. Many of them would like to see it come back. Um, I've even had some to say that uh, they could have fixed it for themselves. They could have fixed it because it was only about a, uh, a small area. It was not that much of a, of a problem to put uh, a new piece of plywood wood in there. And uh, also, when we don't have those houses, uh, things that are going to be thrown away are put into the, to the dumpster, which we have to pay uh, for disposal of. So, so um, you know, it, it really uh, helps the county save money by having those houses there because it reduces the tonnage that we have. So I really would like to see us uh, work towards bringing back those, the, um, they say they call those swamp houses, but whatever we call them, shop, shop. shops or whatever, and uh, so that the citizens can put things in there that can be used by others, uh, but they don't want to, you know, they're, they're no good to them, but someone else can use them. And, um, that way we can save on tonnage as well as, as provide services service to those citizens that are going to use them. I think probably the one in Sunbury is the only one that was in the county. Yeah. The one in Sunbury was the only one remaining in all three counties from a grant that purchased them. When Angel White contacted me, she said no one, she had been several times, there was never anything in there. The roof was leaking, the floor was falling in, and it was damaged to the wall. And uh, I contacted um, the other two people who were on the PCG committee from our county, and we decided that not to repair it, it was going to cost over $3,000 that the county would have to pay for. And there are other places now that they can recycle their materials. They can take it to the um, Sunbury Boutique, which is, if you remember, a couple months ago, Mr. Milton Carter came in with Ms. Johnson and asked to put up signs to encourage people to donate to there or to donate to other causes. So there are other places that people can recycle. I know personally, I've been checking on that swap shop in Sunbury and it didn't have anything in it. Well, from what I'm being told, people take it out as soon as they get it. They put it in there, it doesn't have time to live it. So, yeah. <laughs> We don't recognize it many times, but there are people that are waiting for those things, and they can use them, and uh, who are in need of those types of things. So, uh, you know, and when, they, when they take them to other places, many times they recycle, resell them, and whatever. So, uh, sort of, it was a good project to help those in need, and uh, you know, we have opportunity to bring it back or. So if I will grant for another one, I think that it would be a good thing uh, for the citizens of the county because I'm, I, I've, I've been in them, they, I've had quite a few inquiries regarding that. Why are they taking, you know, for the group service? So, um, I'm going to ask the county manager to take a look at that and see if there's 
format because it's going to have to come from the solid waste fund, which last year we did not collect enough fees to pay it, so we had to pay out the fund balance. Solid waste fund for what? For, you mean to purchase another one? Yes. Well, I'm not asking to purchase another one. I mean, you said we got that one to a grant. And that, there are no more grants for that. That was from the state grant, from what I understand. The one that we got rid of, they were already disposed of it? Mm -hmm. Angel would they have any knowledge of the possibility of another one being available? No, like I said, that was the only one remaining in the area. All right, well, uh, I'm not going to propose that we buy one, but certainly uh, I think it's something to keep in mind. It is a good service for the county. Okay. So noted, it'll be noted in the minutes. Okay, um, at that that ends uh, new business. Is uh, anything else? Madam Chairman, I would like to uh, certainly bring it to the attention of, of uh, our citizens and our commissioners too. And I had an opportunity uh, to discuss this with uh, with anyone because it brought my attention that uh, there are some folks who would like to approach us about a curfew in the county for teenagers. Uh, and so something to think about and like to put it out here so that folks can communicate with us and see if there is a need for that and, uh, and what the purpose is. Uh, anything else? Any other comments? Okay. Uh, any citizen comments? Um, yes, sir. Uh, it's kind of a question. On the, not on that. Okay, tell, could you tell us your name? James Miller from New York. And post, so we can get it on the record. Okay, it's, I, it's more of a question. It's James, okay. James Miller from New York. Um, when, the late, when you were talking about the animal policy and the tethering of the animal, did you all say a time constraint or anything? I didn't understand. Was there, like, if the animal's tethered by, legally by what he's supposed to be tethered with, a harness? Is, is there a time limit that was there any time limit to that? There was not one mentioned in that um, that and that's something you, you need to probably bring up um, okay. at the public hearing. Okay. And the other one was the lady talking about the nurses' homes. Mm -hmm. She did a good job, but I was unclear. She was indicating that one of the nursing homes had a lot of violations. She didn't say it that way, but it indicated that way. And a lot of us are going to be in a nursing home one day. I hope not. But if you remember in Florida, the nursing home during the hurricane, I think it was eight died because they didn't have backup generators. They didn't move them when they should have. Um, and they're closed. And they, I think there's a lot more, 42 of them they were looking at in Florida. But I'm just saying if, these, if this nursing home keeps violating things, because it might not seem important to, but if you don't get your medicine or you don't get proper food, that's, there's nothing you can do but be waited on. And if you can't do anything about it, if they keep violating is what I'm getting at, would something make them do the right thing? If they don't do the right thing, would something say, hey, look, you've got this amount of time to do this. If you don't do it, we're closing you down. Right? The, state, it, the state does have a right to close them down. Because concerning the generators, I mean, they can shut them down if their violations are egregious enough to do that. Uh, or give them a plan of action that they have to comply within so many days, weeks, whatever. Um, the emergency plan, that's something I, maybe Billy Wynn, would, does he know if each of them have a plan or ask it? That was one of the things that they highlighted as well. That, yeah, to highlight and make sure there is an emergency plan because of if it's, you know, our roads flood sometimes and they're inaccessible, and especially what used to be going east. You know, there is a low place in that road about getting there. Um, so they do need to have a plan of action. Okay. And so that's something that needs to be looked into. Well, I'm just concerned for, for, yes. for, for everyone. And had, because they can't, don't have a voice. Yeah, and my grandmother, she, she was in one of Newport News and she fell and we didn't know about it. She died. And, uh, it, you know, we didn't know anything about nursing homes at the time. That was years ago. But we didn't know how bad things were. We just didn't know. And... You know, it's a, it's a yeah. big deal. 
and you need to have, and a lot of these people do not have an advocate or a child or a, someone to <coughs> lobby on their behalf. Okay. And so um, it is important for us to have these committees um, and for to have eyes and ears watching and looking, plus the state that regularly inspects them as well. But certainly, we, we don't want to see any of our elderly neglected because hopefully all of us get to be elderly. Okay, I just wanted to. Uh, Ms. 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 Well, Ms. Well, Ms. Thank you. on this, but I, uh, I believe the regional director through the Alamar Commission, which I believe is uh, Jordan. Uh, that authority, they have the authority to uh, penalize or even possibly shut down for violations that are not taken care of. So that is in place. But if, if there's something really going on that's really bad, would you all be aware of it too? Would you all get notified in any way? Or? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, you know, thank you, Mr. Ewer. Uh, no, excuse me, from you. <laughs> so many of you were really you were out. <laughs> okay, well, we'll start with the commissioner's comments. I think I'll start this end and go to that end this week. Um, thank all of you for coming. I do have a person here from my area of the county, and I appreciate Mr. Jordan for being here. And, um, but we appreciate each and every one of you. Um, and like I said, we are your, um, if you have concerns or uh, like things in the county, contact us. That's what we're here for. As um, we move into the holiday seasons, I hope that we can have charity for all in, our, in the next months and in, um, that we have in November and December and throughout the coming year. Uh, of course, um, uh, as all of us, we are concerned about the events in New York that occurred um, in the afternoon um, yesterday. Um, we need to always be vigilant um, of our surroundings and be aware um, of what is happening. And um, you know, we need to pray for our country, our state, and our county. Yes, indeed. I, uh, I, I concur with all those things that uh, Commissioner Hopper said. I do think our citizens will come in and be a part of the commission's meetings because it all starts here at the local level. Then, uh, you know, we go up to state, federal, and so forth. But uh, we just thank for being here, being a part of it, and, and making sure that we make decisions that are decisions that the citizens are going to benefit from and, and, uh, and really appreciate. So have a good day. Keep our nation in prayer. If we need it. I thank you too for your attendance and your diligence and the interest in the county business. I also want to make a, an announcement, I guess, or just a reminder that November the 11th is Veterans Day. It happens to occur on a Saturday this year. The Historical Society has been putting on a program for the veterans for the last several years. There will be another one here this Saturday, or next Saturday, Saturday week. And I just encourage everyone to attend and to remember the service that these veterans have done for us. They give us the privilege of being able to sit in here today and not have to worry too much about somebody coming through that door and doing harm. But just remember these, all of these men and women that will be showing up in here Saturday morning at 11 o'clock and come out and just give them your honor, just tell them thank you. They would be, it'd be very much appreciated. I uh, want to piggyback everyone else's thank you certainly for your attendance and, and the input, but uh, primarily for giving us calls and letting us know what's on your mind. Therefore, it really makes our decisions easier. And we do look for the easy way out when we make those decisions. But we do want to make the right one. Uh, I would be amiss if I did not thank all of my colleagues here as commissioners, but our county manager and county clerk as well for the job that they do that makes our job a little bit easier in, in reaching the uh, decisions that you want. So thank you. Madam Chairman, one more thing. On the Veterans Day, the speaker this year is Stuart Riddick. Uh, some of you remember him. I'm sure he's a, a year younger than I am. 
but he grew up in the county in Detroit. He helped on a, a High Street, I'm not High Street, Clayton Street. And he spent his working years in, in service. He's a colonel, a retired colonel, and he will be back making the, the main speech on Saturday morning. Okay, at this time, uh, uh, we need to go in closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A for legal, economic development, and personnel. Maybe not all those, but anyway. Um, do I have a motion to go in so, closed so session? That motion has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we'll take a five-minute break at this time. I'll entertain a motion to come out of closed session. So.